All right, I'm gonna get to the tub portion and I don't mean to talk down to any of you guys by disassembling this stuff, but a lot of you don't know. So I'm gonna go through this as quick as I can. This is uh, right here, the clean out or overflow as it's sometimes called. And that's a very easy, just, just one screw to take that out. Sometimes these will actually have a stopper at the end of it, but in this case, it's just an overflow is all it is. And so it's a relatively long screw, so I'm not gonna, well, I might take it out. No, I'm not gonna go through all that. Maybe I will. There's a lot of this stuff that I'm showing you that, again, a lot of you already know. This is very, very simple type of stuff to uh, take all this stuff apart. But since the majority of you, if you're watching this as a DIYer, don't know this stuff, that's why I'm going through the process. So you can just kind of skip ahead if you want to. These caps come off. And when the caps come off, it's going to expose the screws that hold these in here. But these are very, very tight. So I'm going to switch to a razor knife and that's going to be able to um, facilitate that. So what I'm suggesting to you before you get involved in any of this stuff, as I said before when I was at the vanity area, is that you shut the water off because you really never know what kind of dangers lie if something pops in here or something, you've got a lot of water going. In fact, even if you don't turn the water off, know where it's at ahead of time so that you can get somebody to run in there. This is actually live right now. And I'm not too concerned about it. That gets those off. These little scussions usually screw in or just pop right out. And as you can tell, at one point, these look very, very nice. And we're all the latest style and rage, which is kind of weird looking at them now because they just look old as dirt. And I can't imagine even having those polished up that what they would look good. But that's all that is, is just getting these plates off. Very, very, they obviously haven't been taken off if at all, in many, many years. This is, this is, this is a little stuff that gets in the way of me doing my big stuff, which is why I don't normally show the process of doing all this stuff. And then there's another plate in there that you don't have to worry about because we're going to be cutting all this out anyway and putting a new valve in eventually. And the valve is going to, probably going to go up here somewhere because it's going to be, as I said before, when I started a custom shower conversion. So, I'm not too concerned about ruining anything. It's all garbage. <clears throat> so, the tub spouts themselves, there are two, mm, three different ways that these fit in. 90% of the time, 80% of the time anyway, um, it's going to be a screw turn style type thing. So the pipe st sticks out here. There's a male threaded in, end on that pipe somewhere around this point. And that male threaded end goes into the female threaded end, which has to do with the spout. So it's just a lefty loosey type of thing. Sometimes you can actually get them off with your hand. Sometimes you have to force them off. And in that case, you do what you can. I don't have my large channel locks or pipe wrench, but normally I would try and get it loose with that if I had some problems. But any which way, it doesn't really matter. Just turn it to the left and you're gonna know almost right away if this is a screw type uh, situation you're dealing with, or if it's not. And in this case it is. And this is old fashioned, look at that, galvanized. So it's normally a copper type connection, but you can clearly see on the inside. Well, you can't probably clearly see, but there is a female and then that's a male end. And that's really all there is. I'm not gonna bother taking that pipe out because it connects to another um, iron pipe. And I don't want to, once I take the walls down, I'll address all of that stuff. And that's pretty easy. There is a bottom. Unfortunately, I'm out of town and I didn't have the forethought to bring in my plumbing box, but normally there is a special tool that you put down between that cross there and again, Lefty Lucy to take this out of there and get that frame clear. Um, I'm going to do what I can with a couple of screwdrivers or po possibly the end of some, some channel locks 
and stick them down there and try and turn that, see how loose it is. If I can't get it out, then no harm, no foul. Um, different ways that you can kind of figure it out for yourself, but in this case, because I know I'm going to be changing that out and making a transition from inch and a half to two inch, even if I pull the tub out and all that stuff later on and I bust that pipe, I don't really care because I'm going to be breaking it off anyway. Once that's free and clear, we can start busting out the tub. So getting to the tub situation. Uh, there are tubs out there that are iron. There are, um, there are tubs that are metal, that are thicker metal, thinner metal, etc. etc. Usually a magnet will tell you. Uh, I don't know if I have a magnet. I used to somewhere. But um, if you had, there it is, it just popped up in my hand. So if you had a magnet, you put it up against there, and if it sticks, which this one is definitely sticking, then you know that it's metal. And this is kind of a false reading here because I, I whacked it a couple times with a sledgehammer, and you can clearly see that this is a, a cast iron tub, which is always uh, beneficial if you get into these older tubs to have a cast iron because if you actually had a metal one, a very thick metal one, built in from the turn of the century up through about the 60s or 70s, then you actually have to get that out. It's about 350 pounds to try and maneuver it out the door and all that stuff. I've ran into that a couple of times. So when I see a magnet sticking to it, I'm like, oh no, it's, it's one of those thick metal ones. If it's a thinner metal, built in you know the 90s or 2000s or whatever, then not a big deal. You can just pop it out. Once the wall's down, you can pop it out and get it sideways and out the door. In this case, because it's cast iron, even though this is a false reading with the magnet, so I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming nothing. Cast iron, you're not supposed to have a metal that, that attracts a magnet. So I don't know what happened there. Either which way, I have a sledgehammer that um, I beat this thing down with. And you're going to need... And you're going to need gloves, and you're going to need some eye protection. And this is a very, very heavy, I don't even know what size this is, or what weight this is. Um, probably about a 10 pound sledge or better. Um, like I said, get eye protection, you might want ear protection, and you definitely want some gloves on. And you just beat the heck out of this, and it's going to break apart in pieces. And some of those pieces will still be pretty heavy, but not as heavy as a tub in hole, because again, you got at least 300 pounds of material here that's going to have to get out one way or the other. So this is not the fun process. Taking the walls down are the fun process, and let me show you how that's done. I have a Dremel, and I used to do it with a sawzall, but as I said before, if you do a sawzall, you, all, you really need to know where your pipes are at, and you need to know if there's any electrical on the opposite side of the wall, because if you get into that with a sawzall blade that are usually about four, about five inches minimum, you can cause a lot of other problems. So this is preferable because you can actually put it, you can actually put it sideways like this and only get in about an inch of the blade into the wall. This is sheetrock. And so you just do the perimeter all the way around, which I've already pre-done because I don't want to bore you to death going through there. So I have the last six inches. Done. That way you don't have to go through 20 minutes of me showing you the whole perimeter, but that's basically what you're doing to get your walls free. You're going to mark your studs. When you go through that, you're going to know when you're cutting where the studs are at. You're going to a little pencil mark, a little hash mark where your studs are at, and that's where your pry bar, wherever my pry bar is at, your pry bar is going to, going to dig into that. This is not, this, <laughs> this won't do you any good, but a heavier one will, and you'll get that right down where the stud is at and you'll pull on it. Actually, let me back up. You get a smaller sledgehammer, and if I had one, I would show you, but you get a smaller sledgehammer. These actually come in pretty good chunks. Usually I get out about half and half. I'm not gonna necessarily try it on this, but you would, you would take your larger um, sledgehammer, or a smaller sledgehammer rather, and you would just knock the heck out of this and get yourself a line made. And then you would go to your stud and pull that out. And sometimes it comes out in one long piece and sometimes it's in half. And sometimes I will even do that same knockout going vertical horizontally. So I have four different chunks that I can take out at one time. This is usually two chunks, although I've, made, I've managed to get it out in one before. But you do the same thing. You just knock the heck out of it with a smaller sledgehammer. 
and you can pull out uh, two separate chunks. And that, that makes the work very easy. Uh, er, it's not easy, but it makes it easier than, um, you know, knocking out with a hammer and doing all this DIY TV stuff that you see all the time. All right, so I'm pretty deep in the process. I think probably last time I was on camera, 20 minutes, maybe 20 minutes have passed. The same knockout that I told you about going this way, you see it? So I went that way along the back wall, and then I went that way. I got it out in four sections. It is the lathe type uh, mudding type of construction that I thought it was. Um, the customer actually told me that it was sheetrock, which it kind of is because it still has sheetrock behind it. And then they mud over it. They put the wire lathe on top of that. And yeah, it's the old type of construction. And just know that this is not the easiest to work with. You have to bust through all that wire. That wire mesh will hold you up um, if you don't do that. And then it's just a matter of getting a grip inside of those areas as we've done all these uh, where the studs are at where you mark them and then just pull it out of the wall you don't have to pull it completely out you just need enough grip wear gloves and then just pull it out with your hands if you're strong at all you can make it happen to where you have these sections to move out then your tub is almost free and clear at that point we start busting up the tub and I will get to that when I get there so hope you learned something so far Don't slip. <laughs> How was that, Joy? That was easy. Pretty easy. Yeah? Where's that oh, button at? Where's that, where's that easy button, huh? What'd you say? That was easy. <laughs> the bottom's a little harder because you have all the caulking and stuff at the bottom, but it still comes off the same way. And you get the big pry bar, not that little cheesy one you got. So the bathtub area is gone, as you see. It probably all said and done mm, 30 minutes maybe 40 I don't know it's relatively easy the way I explained it and what I'm really really happy about this galvanized pipe that when I was taking off all the scushions and all that stuff scushion I don't like saying e scushion it's almost like it's electronic and it's not um, when I saw the galvanized pipe it was kind of tripping me out because I don't like galvanized pipe usually gets real brittle especially on the threads and to the point where you have to transition and transition and transition and this one looks pretty pristine, which is odd. Um, even the tape is still relatively new. So I imagine at some point through the years, somebody came in and transitioned into copper, which I'm really happy about. I, I Trust me on that. There's a lot of things that are a happy surprise. One of them is that I can bust this tub out, as I mentioned earlier. That's a happy surprise to me. And then this one too, because all I have to do is cut out those supply lines, the hot and the cold, and I can just bring up my new valve oh, and put it there and I don't have, yeah. It's it's a Pandora's box when you get into this, the older stuff, especially from the 50s and 60s. It's just, it's rotted beyond repair. And you keep on backing up and trying to make it and trying to make it and then eventually you might find a bite. But by that time you spend a lot of time and energy trying to um, make all those connections. If anybody does plumbing, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But getting on to the tub. So now that we have the walls out and they are outside and it's all free and clear, this is the only thing stopping us from finishing the demo on the floor. And as I mentioned before, this is a lot, a lot, a lot of elbow grease with this bad boy right there. There's not an easy way to go about this. You'll never get an easier way than this. I used to lift these up on tilt them up and it takes three hosses to yeah then you need a dolly or a hand truck and yeah it's a big pain so busting it out is very labor intensive but it will save you a lot of frustration if you ever try and get one of these out don't stand it up and think you're going to get it out three doorways because i got three doorways that i'd have to move maneuver it around so we're going to get started on busting this all into pieces i'm not worried about the drain as i said before i can't get it out but it doesn't matter anyway I didn't seal off the drain because it doesn't matter anyway because I'm, yeah, so there's all of that. And then, yeah, we're going to get um, all of this tub out of here probably in about 20 minutes, 
maybe 30 at most and take the pieces outside and we'll be done with this demo. Hey Joy, what's up? I'm about to bang this tub, tub away. <laughs> so Joy is down here in Florida. Getting my, getting my pee pee. What? Can't pee -pee. hear you. What? Can't hear you. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. So Joy came down to Florida with me. This is his last job. Congratulations. You're graduating soon. I'm gonna get my university. Old. Exactly, tiling. The tiling academy is almost finished for you. I, I don't know you'll pass the final exam, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We got about, what, 10 days to figure that out? Oh, yeah, about. exactly. You look kind of funny with all that, that space gear on. Why do you have space gear on? Oh, because I don't know. It's gonna make a lot of noise. Oh, what are you doing? Try to bang this stuff out. Hey, st what stuff? Talk. <laughs> I'm trying to bang they don't this know what you're talking about. Oh, you're banging the tub out. Yeah. I hit it just slightly. Yeah. Oh, it hurt my ears. Yeah. I whacked. So we're doing, uh, sure. we're doing this tear out here. Joy is getting his first glimpse or his first labor experience at busting up a tub this is a cast iron tub and cast iron once you start busting it will will go out relatively easily as opposed to pulling it out and so amongst the other things that joy gets to experience that i do on a daily basis he gets to actually bang this tub out and it will be uh, interesting don't break my camera yeah uh, I so, I'm gonna yeah so i did these first couple wax to make sure that it was cast iron not not metal or not a steel tub but you know, go ahead. This will be your first ever. Wow. Wow, you got some strength, Joy. Wow. You got a hole yet? Kind of. That's it. That's the first. Okay, so now it gets much easier because see how this other piece is off like that? Now it gets much easier. And it's just, yeah. It's doing that for about five minutes and <laughs> taking a 10 minute break. Half an hour. <laughs> no, I mean, this whole tub should be out in no time mm, as long as you start getting those holes. One, that's the weak spot, that's the Achilles heel. Once that starts, all the way across then it, then those other pieces come out pretty easy but you know it's, it's still heavy even this piece here that probably weighs i'm gonna say at least four or five pounds oh it is crazy heavy. huh i would never know that right so yeah we got some work <sighs> tell me about it Wow. Go, Joy. Yeah, keep going the way you were going. Same direction. Same direction. There you go. Well, we finally managed to get the tub out and a whole bunch of pieces that are in a whole bunch of buckets <laughs> to make it to make life easier. In fact, the whole bathroom is out here. The walls, everything is out here. Vanities. And then the bottom of the tub. There's really no reason by this point you're looking at about maybe 120 pounds of material um, at the bottom part. And let me show you something a little interesting. And it has nothing to do with anything on the demo. But I always find it... Oh God, I can't do it with one hand. Hold on a second. I always find a little fascinating history. I'm always fascinated with history anyway. On all of these cast iron tubs, it's going to have a manufacture date. In this case, this is February 1st, 1982. You see the K? So that's when it was manufactured. And it was manufactured at 1 p.m. Actually, I think that's 2 p.m. So it was manufactured on that date. Sorry, on that date and on that time. The last one I did actually said, I think it was August of 1955 that it was manufactured. Yeah, the house was from 56. I don't know just one of those little weird things oh also they have these legs that level it out which is really cool because most tubs don't have those nowadays you have to yeah there's a ledger board on the other side but i'm sure these guys that said it can you imagine i mean hundreds if not hundreds of thousands of these were set back in the day 
and having to lug these things around and set these things. Oh my God, those guys were strong back then. So I'm gonna have to put some light on this because my camera apparently, there's a lot of light in here, but it's not showing on my camera. Uh, 99.99999.999 percent of the time, you actually have, ooh, thank you, George. Um, you are my light. <laughs> you have a box, and I even referenced that, I think, at the beginning of the video, and I've shown it on many videos that I do where I have slab construction. So what they normally do is they'll have like a one by six or something like that they'll build that box even if it's plywood they'll have this area boxed out and you can see clearly where it was at one time this was original tub from 1982 i already know that so i don't know why the plumber or anybody would have put concrete down in here because this was already preformed out kind of raggedy but be that as it may it was kind of preformed out just to be in the dirt and that's the way it's supposed to be and this is not they actually encapsulated this whole, so, so this is where the tub drains at, and then about five, six inches over is where your overflow goes into, and eventually, yeah, the drain just spills the water inside of the drain if there's overflow, it goes straight down. And so this makes my job a lot harder. I'm glad I brought my hammer drill, my uh, jackhammer, if you will, because i got to jackhammer all this concrete out. I can't do anything with that drain the way it currently sets. Even if I could have somehow taken that part out, which I couldn't get out, even if I, the top part, as it were, even if I had done that, I still would have been relegated to jackhammering this, because I, I, there's no way that I could transition this inch and a half to two inch in order to do my shower, nor can I move it over. Look how close it is. That's the overflow, so that's not the drain proper, that's the overflow. So I'm literally a, barely an inch off of the plate here. That's just no way it would ever work. So there are exceptions to the rule. Not everything is going to go the way that you want it to when you start getting into it, but I just want to, that's a heads up. So now you clearly have an understanding of how things work. I wish it had been the box the way that I had already proposed, so I'll have to come back on the video once I jackhammer all this stuff out and show you how the transition is done. So this bathroom is basically torn out, except for the floor. This last part of the floor I haven't got to yet, but that's pretty easy. Uh, going there. All the walls are gone. The tub is gone. Everything is cleaned out. I'm almost ready for my prep, except that we have an anomaly here. If I had a flashlight, I could show you a little better. And magically, a flashlight can appear in my hand in just a second. See, look at that. It magically appears in one second. So, what we have here is a failure to understand plumbing. And I don't know why a plumber who's building a subdivision would ever put a boot down here. It doesn't make any sense. It's illogical. So the other end of this was a couple of 90s that came up and kind of swung around, and it's long been gone since now, but um, it has an inside portion that would connect to the outside portion of that pipe right there. Oh, there it is. It just magically appeared. So the inside portion was glued at one point, never any primer on it, which is why it came off so easy. Um, I guess the point is, like, that would have been glued to that pipe where the boot is at, and they didn't. And that's just an oddity to me. I mean, they squished down the bottom, bottom part of that boot. You can see where the rubber... Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very strange thing that I'm still scratching my bald head trying to figure out because it was clearly cut over here. Right there on the edge, it was clearly cut. And the boot, I untightened from the top, but the boot wouldn't have done any good anyway at the top of there because it is where it's at. I didn't move it. So it had no bite. There was no, never any bite to wrap around this part. Very odd. It's just one of those things that make you go, hmm... And um, so going forward, it's kind of good that I had to dig down this far because that way I have more than enough room to make my transition. I'll put a, that's an inch and a half, and I have to go to two inch. So eventually I'll put a reducer, um, a 90 elbow reducer, as it were, and I'll just transition this direction, dig out a little bit more dirt over this direction. I think I'm going to have to put a 20, 22 and a half on there. I don't know. But anyway, I'll figure it out. And then eventually we'll get that drain as center as possible. I think the outside of my shower is going to be in this area right here. I usually try and make them get them out as far as possible, but I haven't been instructed on if I'm going to keep that same footprint or not. 
and um, in that case I would have to knock out some more of this concrete to get it over because we're not trying to line up the drain center. In order to do a drain center on a concrete slab, if you guys don't know, to get it over here for example would be, would be center. You would have to knock out this concrete. Probably the easiest way to go, hmm, what is this thickness? I think this is four inch. This is about four inch concrete. So the easiest way to do that is to get a circular saw any type of blade on a circular saw is going to cut through concrete and you, you dig a trough about four inches wide and you go all the way to the center point, just past the center point. Then you get your hammer drill or jackhammer or whatever and you knock out that four inches of concrete and then you would make that drain and, and then you, go, you got to dig out that dirt too, but not so far as I did. Um, and then you would kind of set it in that trough and then all that stuff would be concreted in afterwards, same as I'm going to concrete all this stuff in once I configure the drain. But we're not doing that here. It's a lot of time and effort and energy and extra work that he doesn't want to go through. So we're going to set it as close to the wall. Well, not close to the wall. We're going to set it probably nine or ten time nine or ten inches off the wall from where it's at now. And that's uh, what I have to deal with. Just in case you're wondering, hopefully some of that information uh, helps you in some way, shape, or form. We are going to Home Depot now to go pick up all our building material and start prepping this stuff. This is still day one and we'll we'll start in on the prep proper tomorrow. I'm probably not going to do much more work today except figure out that mystery because it's bugging me. Okay, Alright we're in day two and I still haven't figured out the mystery of the Fernco. Some people call it a Fernco. I call it a boot. Don't know why it was on there. I had a lot of guesses which rang untrue. Still don't know why it's on there. This inch and a half pipe right here is securely in here. I thought some way or another, because it was all covered, I thought for some reason or another that this thing somehow was just strapped on there with the boot. But I was wrong. I, I still don't know why they did that. Regardless, and despite that, uh, this right here, this is a reducer. And generally speaking, um, whenever I do a tub to shower conversion, I have to use one of these because that's inch and a half. Um, so for this is inch and a half ID, and this is two inch OD. Or in other words, your two inch pipe would fit inside of there. Whereas your one and a half would fit inside of there. So this is already primed and kind of ready to go. Um, the back end of it slides right on here. I'm not going to put it on there because once you put primer on it, it tends to want to stick really hard and I don't want to do that yet. I'm not ready to glue. I'm not going to show you the glue process because there's no point. Um, so this is what I set up. This is a connector for a two inch, um, little two inch pipe here. I have a 90. I have another little area that will get it up to about the point that I want it. Uh, so that pipe was already pre-cut and I have another 90. So the way that fits in is pretty simple. It just slips right on top of there and now I have it exactly where I want it because I still want to be center and since all my plumbing is still going to be center it's a little offset and it's almost to the edge here I don't want it all the way to the edge because it's going to look kind of funky in here with the slope going all the way from the back to the front but I still want enough girth back here when I'm finished that I have about maybe three well, about four maybe five rows of tile that's going to go in this back area and then the drain is going to just eventually go on there like that now the reason whoop, it's starting to slip down the reason that the drain is currently higher now I can't make it stay the reason it's currently higher than it, what it needs to be is because I know eventually when I start going all those connections it's going to start slipping down and because it starts slipping down I'm going to be about where I need to be but this is going to be the last glue that I make to make this make sure this last two inch pipe is exactly exactly because I've already cut a couple of them already and they weren't the right size so I could revert back to those but that's a larger one anyway now that's really relevant I'm just letting you know the process I'm going through your process may vary um, so how you end up making it happen is kind of contingent on your setup but this is pretty basic I don't have access this deep down normally I don't have to worry about that. Normally I have an inch inch pipe, or sorry, inch and a half pipe sticking out of the ground somewhere because this is a good probably 15 inches, I'm guessing, down in the dirt. And normally your P-trap, because the P-trap is right below that area at the end of my tape measure, the P-trap starts right there. 
but currently, yeah, we're exactly 15 inches down where the P-trap starts, which is crazy. Usually you're looking at about 8, 9 inches, and I'm not even going to that point because I have my pipe sticking out by the time I take out my dirt. Speaking of the dirt, you keep your dirt wherever it's at. I got a bucket here that when I took out all the dirt, so what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack down all that dirt once I get all this glued in. I'm going to pack down all that dirt probably all the way up to about here because you got four inches you got four inches of um of concrete that you're going to backfill in but all that dirt has to still go back inside here once all that's glued and dried pack all that dirt down the best you can the end of a two by four or something like that the best you can and once it's all nice and packed solid then you put your four inches or so of concrete and just bury the whole thing as opposed to a tub where you would not want to bury it the way it was here a tub gets boxed out and you're looking at dirt and the shower on a slab anyway always gets concrete um, so that's kind of the process I don't know that I'll show the process because I've already explained it you're just pulling all those connections make sure that you have that adapter down there to transfer from inch and a half to two inch and know that your p-trap in the slab situation is always put in during the construction phase at below grade level and that's why you don't see a p-trap the way you would normally see and so I don't know what other questions anybody could possibly have, but that's the process. All right, so I have the drain part taken care of, and I'm going to fill that in with concrete in a few minutes. I'm going to let it, all that glue, even though the glue is very tight and all that stuff, I'm going to let it set up. Okay, the drain has been set, obviously. Now that I've done the shower valve, the drain has um, already been glued and all that stuff, and packed in all the excess dirt that I had taken out of it. So what you're doing here, basically is you're taking um, the, all the dirt that you had taken out previously and you get a little two by four or whatever, whatever works for you and just pack it down, pack it down as tight as you can. Then you still want this level, so I put a little torpedo level both directions. And in order to get it level, I'm putting a little rock over here because it's probably an eighth of an inch off going that way. And then there's a little stick in the back going to, yeah, to the back. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my concrete down inside there, pack it down, pack it down, pack it down. And then a little bit later, I'll just pull that stick out. That rock will end up just kind of embedded in there where it stays. And that's how you get your drain level. This is the next day after the pour of the concrete around the drain. And that's what we have. The final is a dried uh, drain area and it is ready for the shower pan liner. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, 10, $15 a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.